Ha. Huh. Brandon, I don't have any camera news, sadly, but I have guitar news. Oh, shit! If you are a fan of guitars. Now, I know you are not necessarily a Fender Stratocaster fan. Mm, uh, uh, personal preference, I think they're gorgeous. I think I have played a Mexican Strat and it is had a beautiful, rich tone. But as far as personal playing, I find the necks of most strats to be a little too thick for my liking. Yeah. But that is a personal preference thing, not a like judgment on anybody else who is an absolute strat fan. Like, well, are you a PRS fan? I have never played a PRS. They're uh, gorgeous. Yeah. So in principle, yes. And to my <laughs> understanding, that fucking neck is like fast action. They, and so, they're local. They are local. Yes, they're out of they are uh, local. Salisbury, I think. Salisbury, Maryland. Cambridge. Over the Babe, Maryland. Yeah, I, like, I think it's Salisbury, Maryland. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, if kids, if you're heading toward Daniel, Daniel, <laughs> uh, there'll be a Salisbury bypass. And if you decide not to take that bypass, you'll find yourself in beautiful, majestic seaside Salisbury, Maryland. They have the home of yeah. Paul Reed Smith guitars, as well as <laughs> Disappointment. <laughs> and the insurance capital of Maryland. Oh, God, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, there's there's like a ton of fucking insurance agencies in Salisbury. For some reason, I don't know why they they every once every year they have like an open house and I always want to go. But the timing is always awkward. But also that part of Maryland is not necessarily uh, a place I oh, want to go to fine. by myself. It's <laughs> Fine, <laughs> fuck, man. If if you wanted to go to Salisbury and needed yourself a corn-fed white ass like <laughs> Sherpa, I'm here. Like, consider consider me your pathway to the eastern shores Kilimanjaro. Like, I, I am here to help you climb K2. I am here for you. Well, the the Paul Reed Smith company uh, works with one. John Mayer. I know nothing about John Mayer except that he plays real good. He used uh, to have he used to have a signature uh, Fender Stratocaster, yeah, um, based on one of his like favorite classic Strats. Yeah. I don't I don't know what happened to that relationship, but that is no longer a thing. A couple cool. of, a couple of years ago, he he left the Fender endorsement, and uh, I don't know if Paul reached out or he reached out to Paul, but. They got together and said, hey, let's create a, a John Mayer signature guitar. They came up with something called the Silver Sky. Now, Ooh. if if you cut off the headstock of the Silver Sky and you took a Fender Stratocaster and you put it right next to each other, silhouette wise, they are very similar. OK, you, makes sense. You would be able to tell because the Silver Sky has a, a cutaway on the lower bout so that you can hit the widdly, widdly, widdlies around okay. fret deuce, deuce. But other than that, it is pretty much a Fender Stratocaster. And the, the week it came out, the original Silver Sky, the Internet shit all over it. And then people got their hands on it and they're like, oh, dang. <laughs> right. This <laughs> this this feels like every John Mayer interaction I've had with anyone who is not a fan, yeah. but is open to giving him interpretation. And I yeah. actually have a yeah. a fun John Mayer story, but continue. Oh, so anyway, the original Silver Sky, uh, I think I think it was around three grand. Instantly okay. sold out. Ooh. Instantly wow. sold out. Like Okay. Like instantly sold out. Every okay. version since then has sold out. No matter if it's like the the special edition color, which clocks it around to like four grand. Like fuck, these things are moving as expensive as they are. The, yeah. Like, and it's it's not like it has a figured maple top or anything, or like one of those translucent clear finishes yeah. that PRS is known for. It's, I mean, it's got like classic car finishes but they're yeah, but they're but they're solid colors it's, it's nothing fancy like that that feels like a very john mayer move mm, like dude yeah. is it, it, near as i can tell in the guitars he likes them clean and classy yes. but not super showy yeah it it's 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 all in the sound you pick it up it's it sounds mm -hmm. great they've got mm -hmm. a version with the 
a maple finger a fretboard. They got a, a version with like a rosewood fretboard or whatever the equivalent is these days. Anyway, mm-hmm. uh, last week, PRS and, and people have been begging for a quote unquote more affordable version for for ever since they dropped, ever since they dropped. Yeah. And last yeah. week, Paul Reed Smith debuted the SE Silver Sky. SE okay. stands for Student Edition. It is the, the PRS factory in Korea. Same specs, different wood because it makes it a little bit cheaper, but everything, mm-hmm. everything else is pretty much equivalent. The, the, the bridge is equivalent. So, so you bought one? No. I am okay. I I do not have Silver Sky money. Okay, are, are we still? <laughs> yeah. what, what are we talking about now? Twenty four hundred? No, no, no. We're we're in the eight bones territory. All eight, right, like around eight hundred. W- wow, you know, honestly, going from like a starting price around three G's, yeah, to to eight bones, yeah. Good on them for genuinely making a relatively comparable, uh, affordable guitar. Like that's yeah, eight hundred is is steep for for a lot of us, but it's like workable. not unreasonable. Yeah, like yeah. that is that is a like near as I can tell. Anybody who's curious about guitar spends around two hundred bucks. Anybody yes. who likes guitar spends around six. Anybody who is like fucking into it will yeah. spend eight fifty. Yeah. Anything north of that, you are into this shit. Oh yeah. Or yeah. or you are a super fan who are just buying a specific version because you like guitar, but also you're obsessed with I don't fucking know. Insert the random artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and you're like, well, I have to have this one. <laughs> Well, the the eight hundred dollar price point goes directly against Fender's Mexicaster. So the that the makes Strat- sense. The tr- Stratocasters that are made in Mexico start at yeah. around like seven to eight hundred. If yeah. you want an American standard or like American Player Pro, those start Jeez. at like twelve hundred. So like, yeah, it's 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 going for the jugular. The Mexican Strat is a fucking outstanding guitar. Generally. Oh, yes. Like, oh, yes. If oh, we're yes. bang for buck as far as like, like resonant sound and capability and just feel like they're outstanding. Yeah, the, like, the, Mex- the Mexicasters are very sweet. They're very I was going to say, I, I owned one very briefly and they were, it was. What, <laughs> what happened? Uh, uh, what happened? Well. Honestly, funny enough, this ties into the story of John Mayer. Oh, okay. Yes, please. So anyway, so I had a birthday forever ago. This would have been back when I was 22, I guess. And uh, the lady I was dating at the time decided to throw me a big birthday party and buy me as a birthday gift, a Mexican sunburst strat. And it was a gorgeous gift. And I had easily, I'd say 30 people in the house, all drinking, having a good time. I bailed on everybody. I took two beers upstairs and I bailed on everybody. And I played guitar for easily an hour. And it was Same. beautiful. <laughs> and it and it resonated well. And like oh. just it, it was, it was outstanding and the action was great and like the neck was a little thick for my liking but i was like you know what genuinely i could get used to this oh yeah oh yeah and then smash cut to and i'm trying to remember if the i don't remember if the john mayer thing happened before or after the guitar i think the guitar happened Then the John Mayer concert happens. So months later, uh, if memory serves, I'm going to go on this timeline. She and I go down to Jiffy Lube Live in Virginia, (laughs) which is not a great venue as far as getting in and out of. Beautiful Uh venue once you're there. Um, To go see, and this gives you an idea of the date on this, um, John Mayer, when he was headlining and your body is a wonderland was like the fucking thing on the radio and Maroon five was just getting big. (laughs) So Maroon five opened for John Mayer. Yeah. If you, if you only know that song of John Mayer, you have no idea that the the boy can wail. You have no No, idea that whale. He's, he's, 
currently, to my understanding, I think he is actually fronting Dead and Company, right. uh, which is the remaining members of the Grateful Dead playing the Grateful Dead hits. Mm-hmm. And John is a exceptionally accomplished guitar player, yeah. a really great performer. There's a John Mayer trio where he does a bunch of blues uh, classics on and everything else like that. But yeah. anyway, so but body body doesn't um, tell you any of that. No, he tells you body doesn't tell you any of that. Right. Body right. tells and, you he can he's make a chord this, progression. <laughs> well, body tells you he can make a pop song. Yeah. And he knows how to make money and yeah. good for him. Yeah. Because you got to you got to be able to pay the bills. So this yeah. way you can play all the other shit. Yeah. We'll nobody likes that. the Whitney so, Whitley. <laughs> so uh, Maroon 5, to no big surprise, when they're first starting first albums out. Honestly, I'll stand by the statement. First album for Maroon 5 is a fucking banger. Yep. Like front to back, I, I think there were like 12 tracks. I'd argue eight of them are solid songs and five of them are hits. That's a like accomplished, that's a, I think, yeah. platinum hits. That's a good round. Um, <laughs> yeah, they, they, a lot of people would be so lucky to have half of that. <laughs> yeah. So they they go, they play, they they do all of their premiere songs, everything else like that. They close with Highway to Hell. Only the singer jumps on drums. The drummer jumps on mic. Nice. So we get there a little late. I we catch about half the set. We see we see them play ACDC to close. Girlfriend's looking at me and she's like, see, I told you this wouldn't be so bad. And I was like, hey, you know what? All right. Fine. No problem. <laughs> so like I'm in a halfway decent mood. We are five rows back dead center. I bought her these tickets for a birthday gift. They were a fucking pretty penny. Hmm but I'm trying to do the right thing. Like we were both scratching at the time, but I was like, fuck it. I'm going to do something really nice. So we're there. We're in five finishes. John Mayer comes on. He starts playing all of these things. I think uh, his second album may have like, like it may have just come out or he was working on it coming out or whatever it is. Like he plays, I think daughters, which I believe is on the, is on the second album. He plays a bunch of the other ones. Yeah. And somebody yells, play your body to Wonderland. He's like, ah, oh, come on, guys. That's not till the end. That's my big hit. You know how this works. <laughs> anyway, see if you recognize this one. And he wails into a nine and a half minute version of Stevie Ray Vaughan's Texas Flood with no warning whatsoever. <laughs> also, with no care. And I can tell at this moment, <laughs> the only people that John Mayer is playing to is me and the other two dads who are flanking <laughs> me. One about three rows up and nine and seats engineer. over. <laughs> the, the other one, one row behind me, three seats over. I know this because it starts and only the three of us go, <laughs> hell yeah. And <laughs> I look around. I make eye contact with that guy. I look the other way. I, I That other guy's looking back at me. I kind of give them both the like, huh? Yeah. And then he tears into the fucking solo of it. Fucking dude uh, behind me. We're high fiving at this point. Yes, right. Like yes, I am yes. in biggest dad mode ever. Everyone else around me looks fucking bored. <laughs> and John Mayer is shredding, fucking shredding. And if you've been on the internet, do yourself a favor. If you haven't done this and search, John Mayer guitar face because John Mayer is notorious for his guitar face, similarly to Stevie Ray Vaughan guitar face. Now, if you want to have a little extra fun, type in John Mayer slug where they take his guitar face and him holding a guitar. And instead of him holding a guitar, he's holding a slug. (laughs) So at least the face makes sense. Right. (laughs) Right. Just absolute disgusted pain faces. So. He finishes Texas Flood. Everything's great. The show's about to end. He starts your body as a wonderland. And the lady I was with proposes to me. And I tell her no. (laughs) Pretty sure John Mayer heard me. Oh, (laughs) shit. Because when you break down the bridge of, of your body is a wonderland and he's like, uh, you know, damn baby, you frustrate me. I know your body's all mine, all mine, all mine. I'm like, she proposes, and I was like, 
that's not going to happen. <laughs> and then I look up and I see him kind of give me this like, dude, like, <laughs> and I don't know if to this day, genuinely, I don't know if I imagine that happening, if I hoped that happened or if it actually <laughs> happened. But as far as my memory is concerned, and as far as my story is concerned, when I turned her down, John Mayer gave me the, Ooh, Ooh. that's going to be a long ride home. Uh, yeah. It took us two and a half hours to just get out of the parking lot. Uh, that's yeah. How long that ride home was. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. So uh, well, you, you know, from being on stage that five yes. rows deep is nothing. So you, it's you not, oh, it no. he, and you hear it. He, yeah. he saw that shit. No, he I, saw I, that, that shit. That, that's the reason, like, I feel pretty confident about it because yeah. when he started into Texas Flood and the dads and I got excited, he smirked something fierce. Yeah. Like, because yeah. I li- like, he saw us all high five yeah. and then I'm giving him the big fucking thumbs up yeah. and like, he's tearing into it and I'm looking back at him and I'm giving him the, the fucking horns every so often of like, please don't fucking stop. I don't care about <laughs> any of these fucks around me. Obviously, because I wasn't willing to marry that one. Mm. So clearly, mm-hmm. it's just the dads and I here, as yeah. far as I'm concerned. Oh, that's that's great. <laughs> that's great. So yeah, uh, in in turn, uh, <laughs> I I know John Mayer. The Mexican Strat is has been something that I have tasted, and uh, also I'm not surprised that he moved on to PRS. And I would love to get a fucking half an hour just noodling around on that thing because I'm sure it is gorgeous and amazing and feels fucking perfect and <laughs> it's probably smooth as double cream like they're they're going to sell out of the first batch they're going to sell out of the second batch maybe a year from now they'll get into stores where we can actually go to a guitar center and yeah, actually play touch with one, one. and yeah. then they'll release the maple ver- the maple neck version yeah. and that is when I will be like Hopefully, I will have saved up John Mayer Silver Sky SE money by then. <laughs> so I can say that one. Yes, that one right there is coming home with me. Um, but so to, to follow up, yeah. did, the, did the Mexicaster leave with the girlfriend? <laughs> no, the Mexicaster left with me, but I decided at the time that keeping a guitar there was a gift from somebody who cheated on me more than a dozen times was bad juju. And I traded that. I pawned that shit oh. and, uh, and went and bought a, a car stereo. Um, so mm, okay. yeah, I, not a great choice by comparison, but like I couldn't in good conscience pick that thing up and bury myself in it, knowing that the person who gave that to me was such a fucking asshole. See, that's the thing about the instrument. Instrument don't care. It's yours. No, I, I, I get that. I, I think it's one of those, like, <laughs> it's it's very similar to the guitar you gave me. Every time I pick it up, it carries the weight of our friendship and your kindness and the effort that I just imagine that you put into that. So every time I play, I make sure that I show it the love and respect that I think it deserves. And I make sure that it gets put down gently. It gets wiped down proper. Like it gets fresh strings. Even <laughs> when I don't play it, like I won't let those strings rust on there. Like it's just, <laughs> it's, it's given a shit about people who give a shit about you. And in turn, by comparison, I was like, you know what, if somebody else picks this thing up on the cheap and gets a good vibe from it and feels good about it, that's going to be somebody walking into that place spending 600 on it feeling that they got a great deal that is a great deal absolutely adoring that thing yeah and hopefully right now it is in someone's house somewhere in the greater baltimore area getting the love that it fucking deserves just shredding fucking stairway or something and i feel super good about that like genuinely i do it sucks i miss it it was yeah. a rag guitar but at the same time like if that's the life it got cool i'm good <laughs> i'm good the the other this is very random but the other stratocaster that i've had my eye out for there was a hello kitty branded stratocaster from <laughs> Fender, and yes it only has a bridge pickup so <laughs> that's punk rock as fuck i'm here Ex- for that exactly <laughs> yeah i'm super here for that uh all right we're gonna we're gonna start the show now <laughs> <laughs> welcome to guitar talk on the <laughs> <laughs>
Brandon Chalmers. Um, since we were talking about bands and stuff and guitars, can can you introduce us as if we were a band opening for a better band? <laughs> Cause we are we are we are low podcast on the totem pole in our network. So <laughs> Okay. Uh what what podcast do you want us to, to be opening for oh, we're we're opening for hard knock life the okay we're, we're okay we're, it, this gotcha. is our big break so gotcha um let's see so uh if somebody would imagine that we're bringing up the 19 and this is going to be a nod to our boss here the opening to the 1994 chicago bulls alan parsons project as the lights Fade up from darkness. The lasers go shooting across, cavalcating, casting us in beads of beautiful green light. Hailing from parts unknown via a series of tubes on the internet, we bring you the second greatest podcast in the known universe. They are two men on a journey, on a quest, not only to bring you dumb guitar news, but to bring you rock. Yes, rock. Because as, as ACDC once said in the beginning, back in 1955, there was drums, there was guitar, and then there was rock, and the rock of the fucking Hard Knock Media Podcast is your boys. <laughs> You won Brandon Chalmers, his co-host with the mo-host, Jamie Noguchi. And on the ones and twos, the intro song, the greatest song in <laughs> podcast history. We are the fucking do it cast. So if you hang tight and just use the edge of your seats, the next 186 minutes of band history will be rendered asunder and you only have to wait an additional 24 minutes for sound check <laughs> to hear the rest of the podcast media network. <laughs> but for right now, hang tight. Because here's Wonderwall. <laughs> oh, nice! I forgot yeah, that I had my um, the, your little your little clappy hands. The, yeah, the little magnetic the thing magnet. was in the shot, so <laughs> yeah. I had to get the other one and have them clap. Yeah, you're right, Brandon Chalmers. What have sure. you been geeking on since uh, last we spoke? So what I've what have I been geeking on? So I have been uh, actively trying to make my workspace a little more me. So I ordered a bunch of stuff, um, new gaming mouse pad with the whole Galaxy print light up keyboard. Uh, went and ordered a new mouse because like if I'm gonna be at this place, I'm gonna be actively working. Like I want to kind of make the space mine a bit. Mm -hmm. um, but the big thing I've been geeking on is a pickup from last week because. I don't know other than Vincent who the fuck actually said that they were interested in hearing oh, it. And yeah. I don't care. That was good because be, yeah, that's going to be yeah. the, the topic for today. Is it okay? Yeah. yeah. Cause I have been listening to two more. So we are now at episode four of six Ooh. of the, the rumor. So uh, we'll, we'll dig into that into the body of the show apparently. But uh, yeah, so that's more or less what I've been kind of digging into. Um, trying to think of what. Oh, fuck. Peacemaker. Yes. Fuck. Yes. Have it's you so seen funny. it? 
It's so funny. It's so fucking good. <laughs> and the goddamn intro song is a banger. <laughs> it's a fucking banger. It's a lot of fun. Oh my God. Protect <laughs> Eagly at all costs. I swear <laughs> to God. HBO, if you can hear the sound of my voice, if you hurt that bird, I will burn your office to the ground. <laughs> Holy shit. I love that show. It's it's a lot of fun. I love I love how much heart John Cena is bringing to this shit bird character. Like, yes. God, yes. It's just, he's so in terms of wrestlers who've broken out of wrestling and, and made something like something more, I never thought it would be John Cena. Like John Cena is doing what Hulk Hogan wanted to do, but like much more successfully. Yeah. I, you got to remember though, it took him a while. Sure. Like sure. from the like, Marine to now yeah. has been a, a journey. Honestly, like seeing him in train wreck, I didn't think he could pull out of that. Yeah. Cause I thought he was going to get pigeonholed as just a, you know, comedic actor or a one-off or, you know, like small bit part roles. Yeah. And that was going to basically be what he was going to do. Yeah. And somehow I guess somebody had some real faith in him. And you know what? I wonder what it is. He's hosting Wipeout right now as well <laughs> with Nicole Byer. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're I, really funny together. <laughs> right. And it makes me wonder if like part of the whole thing of him just kind of getting a turn is just him having exposure to a different audience mm -hmm. and just kind of doing me like, no, 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 you don't have to be a wrestling fan. I can be fucking charming. I promise. Yeah. And then smash cut to everybody who finds him charming, then realizes how much of a fucking like, absolute monster of a human he is <laughs> and it's like dudes are impressed by him women usually everyone that i've interacted with is like at the very least like no i get a basement at the minimum damp if not flooded and it's like yeah. all right fair enough like oh, i yeah. get it dude's easy on the eyes puts in the fucking work <laughs> so like you get a bit of that together then he's fucking charming and fun like i and you get to see all of him in this show. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Or just about. But yeah. Yeah. You get a whole lot of Cena. <laughs> you get a lot of Cena in this show. A and lot him of pause being, worthy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. A lot of very pause worthy moments there. Um, <laughs> but also like just him showing emotion and a, a ton of character range and really kind of expanding this universe. And like, it's, it's very good. Yeah, it's, it's so fun. Good. It's so fun. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, anyone who hasn't seen it genuinely, if you have the HBO streaming service, I believe as of air, or, sorry, as of recording, there are three episodes up right now. I believe new episodes show up on their streaming service on Thursdays, if memory mm. cor is correct. Mm. So probably by the time this episode airs, there's probably going to be another episode on there. Yeah. Genuinely, give it a spin. Like, I think you're going to enjoy it. Even if you're not necessarily a superhero fan, they also <laughs> do a really nice recap of Suicide Squad yes, too, and like how he got there. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it's, it's very good. And that intro, don't skip the intro. Yes. Yes. Don't yes. do it. Yeah. Like after you watch it once, fine. If it's not your jam, but genuinely, I gotta be honest with Jamie. I'm going to draw a line in the sand. If that intro is not your thing, don't be my friend. <laughs> I don't have time for that kind of negativity in my life. I just, I don't, I don't, I don't. They, they got so many requests for it. James Gunn convinced the studio to release just the intro on YouTube. So now it's on YouTube. If you just want to see that. And it's like so good. Have that on repeat. It's God so damn it. It's so good. Oh, fuck. Is this fun? Ah, uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. But I, I feel like there are two different parts of DC movies and uh, there's the fun part, and then there's the part that takes themselves way too seriously. Right. And and this this part of the DCU... Yeah. I, you can keep yeah. Zack Snyder's weird, gray-toned claws the fuck away from all of this. Yeah. That'd be great. I, I, do, have, I do have to give Zack some credit. Like, the, the entire cast of the Justice League way preferred working with him than... Uh, another boy we won't be talking about 
Um, but but yeah, I I I think the the attitude of this show, the way that they're just they're having fun with it. I I feel like there's something here, and if DC is able to like nurture this side of it and keep going with it, the the tone of this and of this series feels very similar to the tone of their animated stuff. Yes. Where yes. they're not afraid to take a little bit of risk. By the way, I watched uh, the Injustice animated uh, movie last night. Oh, was that good? It's a lot of fun. It's weird. It's a lot of fun. And they have no problem fucking murking <laughs> just everyone. Man. Have like, you, holy yeah. fuck do they have no problem just murking everyone. <laughs> have you seen the Harley Quinn uh, cartoon? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Stuff like that. I think they've got a real good handle on, but like the best example I think is that new suicide squad. Yeah. For yeah, yeah. what this universe, I think can be in a fun way. Like there are places for the serious shit and that's fine. Yeah. But at the same time, like you, it is a comic book and you cannot be serious all the time with this sort of subject matter because at a certain point like you're dealing with like the Snyder shit at a certain point you are dealing with a villain that is called the Joker who has the word damaged tattooed on his forehead and look I'll consider a juggalo dangerous at the gathering when they're throwing saw blades on stage like I know they have <laughs> Can they be dangerous? Yes. Do I consider a juggalo going to get some fried chicken at a Royal Farms at 3 a.m. dangerous? Not inherently. <laughs> like the potentials there. I don't want to talk politics with them. Uh -uh. I don't want to smell them. Uh -uh. But I'm not concerned. I'm not holding on to my wallet in my pocket. I'm not head on a swivel worrying about whether or not they're going to pop off and do something dumb. I assume they treat me the same way I want to treat them. Let's just get our food and mind our own fucking business. And if yeah. we happen to be polite to each other as we walk by with a sup, that's great, but don't expect anything else. Yeah. Like, no, nobody is expecting me to look at them and be like, <laughs> magnets, am I right? And <laughs> they're not like, I'm not expecting them to be like, hey, you and those khakis, look at you. Like, <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. We have an understanding here. Yeah. But yeah, I, <sighs> those, those movies, like, they're a they bit take much. themselves. They're yeah, a bit they, much. they take themselves they're a bit. Much. bit a bit too serious. Like I, I genuinely wish that Aquaman was done with the same attitude as the animated series or as suicide squad, because God damn, that movie would have been so much fun. Yeah. It's, it's kind of, like, it's kind of uh, dreadful. Like it's, it's just like Momo is great, but if he had the ability to just on occasion, like high five a whale, why? Yeah. <laughs> Aquaman, <laughs> like just as a pass by series, like him just like oh, on on the way, right? Like, yeah, like him like on the way to go take out Ocean Master or him riding the back of a killer whale and be like, my man, and like high flipper to high five the whale right before he leaps off to go I kick feel. his ass. Like bang. <laughs> right, right. Is it necessary? No. Is it dumb? Yes. Is it perfect? Oh, fucking course it is. Yeah. It's Momoa yeah. as Aquaman. Yeah. Like, I, I think a, a little of that into the Aquaman would have been. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Been oh, just just a little bit of like, this is a universe where King Shark exists. This <laughs> King Shark. Like. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> right. Right. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I think that's the tone. Like we've had DC taking itself a little too seriously. And I think yeah. it needs to get it needs to get weird and lean into the weird. And yeah, I, 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 I hope weird shit. I genuinely hope that it, it's Robert Pattinson who's the new Batman, right? Oh, oh yeah. It's it's gonna be bleak. <sighs> he's he's gonna be amazing in it, but it's gonna be bleak. 
I so it's not so we're not going to let him have fun with Harley then. No, he's he's no. I I have you seen the trailer? No. It no. is I this oh this goes boy. back to my yeah. to my trailer thing of like I'm it's a Batman movie. Oh, trailers yeah. are for movies that I don't understand what the fuck they are. Yeah. And make me question whether you get an established franchise, I'm going to see it. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to see it. Now, will I see it when it comes out? I don't know. But I also don't need to know half of what's going on and then go searching the fucking internet for context. Like, yeah. I'm good. Oh, it's 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 going to be it's going to be rough. It's going to be bleak. I think Robert Pattinson is going to bring everything he can to it. But it's it's going in the the dark hole. We're taking okay. shit way too seriously uh. side of things. Brandon, I and I know you're not into trailers, but the bat symbol is constructed from pieces of the gun that was used to kill his parents. That is where we're starting from. And it's just gonna, it's oh gonna God. It's gonna, it's oh, gonna <laughs> fuck you. And 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 I God. feel bad because oh. I feel like Robert Pattison can do more with it. Yeah, I'm not trying to judge <laughs> that dude for that shit. But Jesus Christ, <laughs> what in the wide world of steampunk watch part bullshit is you making the fucking bat symbol of all things and deciding that's the arts and crafts project you want to have on your chest yeah. from the gun yeah. that murdered your one? Who yeah. gave that child that gun? Yeah. Yeah. Like genuinely, it's that should be state's no evidence <laughs> locked in a fucking vault and moved on. Fuck. Wait, hang on. Is this Jeremy Irons Alfred again? I don't know. I I think they might have a whole new That kid didn't buy that gun himself. So Alfred must have fucking greased some palms to get the gun from fucking Wayne's parents' death. So this way he can fucking hot glue some fucking gun parts into the shape of a bat. Yeah. Also, yeah. what douchebag decided that that's what he's going to let me take a guess. <laughs> so it's it's got to be a revolver, right? I I think it's like a I it's, it's, like it's got to be a fucking revolver. So this way, yeah. the, the signature barrel of the gun can be the body of the fucking bat. No, it's not. It's not. It's not it's a not? revolver. It's, uh, okay. it's like, it, a, like a Glock sort of thing. Like a Beretta or a Glock. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Fine. Whatever. More parts to play with. Either way, fucking come on. Like genuinely. Yeah, it's going to be bleak. It's not going to be. <sighs> Jesus It's Christ. not going to be fun. Like, you know uh, what? Honestly, if you're going to make the bleak one, can we just make the alternate universe one where Bruce is killed and Thomas Wayne is Batman and he's uh, super sad and uh, mom is Joker? <laughs> make that one where dad has to hunt mom down because they both went fucking crazy because their son got murdered in front of them and all their money in the world can't stop the inevitability of that kid getting fucking shot because you spent more time going to fucking opera and yeah. spending all your money on bullshit and you did actually cleaning up the city you live in you rich fuck you got exactly <laughs> what you deserve a dead son <laughs> yeah i think i don't know i guess fuck like genuine like genuinely though like yeah. if you want to make a i get it like i it genuinely like some of these batman movies feel like this sort of weird, quiet one-upsmanship. You're like, bet you can't make a sadder Disney movie. And it's like, <laughs> fucking bet I can. <laughs> bet I can. Yeah. Like, I, let's yeah. kill the parents and then send him off on a fucking adventure, Nemo. Let's go <laughs> do this shit. I, I definitely feel like in terms of where they're taking Batman, they just want to, like, make him as dark as possible. Jesus Christ. Like, genuinely... Uh, <sighs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. Set it to fucking EDM music. Put yeah. him in some fucking giant hot topic panels with a bunch of zippers and just have him brood at Alfred. Yeah, <laughs> where where it's not even he's not even trying to solve crime in the city. He's trying to stop crime with his music. That's what it is. <laughs> just it's like just, really bad radiohead. <laughs> just a see just a ton of fucking just like poorly done prodigy covers is really what it's going to sound like. Yeah. 
see the Lego Batman movie. I think that's where they need to be because like the Lego Batman movie is very fun and Bruce gets to be bleak and emo and everyone around him is like okay. right <laughs> right right I like I I can get behind the animated series does this a ton yeah all the animated movies are like Jesus fuck we get it okay yeah, yeah Diana like, flirting with him and being like What's wrong right. with you? I'm trying to put my body on your face. Like, right. Yeah. Like, I'm <laughs> like, look, I'm trying to get that dick, and you are just over yeah. here going, yeah. like, yeah. get it together, what my is dude. Wrong with you, yeah. Amazon on God your face. Di- Can someone hell? please buy this rich bitch a fucking wave runner? Yeah. Because no one sat on a wave runner. Yeah. I, yeah. And I think I would like that kind of a Batman where they're, where they're like, okay, we get it, but. Jesus yeah. Christ. Okay. Yeah. No, I get it. Martha. <laughs> Great. Let's move on. Yeah. That, yeah. Like, him, uh, him see, and Jamie, Diana, shit yeah. like that. That's why I don't watch trailers because I didn't know about the dumb fucking gun parts into the bat symbol. <laughs> that does not help my interest in this movie. Uh, <laughs> that means that Batman to me is no better. And the guy who used to wander the fucking convention with the telephone <laughs> atop his top hat. And if the crux of your outfit is hot glue and machine parts and you are not a goddamn handmade mech, I don't care. <laughs> Steampunk Pacific Rim. Here for all of that. The, the 1860 version of fucking Pacific Rim oh, where yeah. we get a like full on cello style concerto with a fucking Pacific Rim theory and like <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm here for all the and theme would be rad stove and stuff. God damn, yes the whole thing would be rad the team of people who would be on like harnesses with like rubber suspension things just shoveling coal and then springboarding back <laughs> yeah. to make sure that they're safe and when the mech fucking starts to tilt the fire fucking goes from side to side oh my and God. like gypsy danger's got the giant fucking uh, like things pumping in and out and like churro alpha looks exactly the same yes exactly yes. the fucking same yes <laughs> i'm here for all of that oh, how man. rad would that be <laughs> Like right big steam piston right. yeah like when it punches right. it goes out and then right pow wow yeah like uh fuck what was it big o was like that wasn't the it big o, or, yes the thank big o. you okay cool yeah. right on just make sure i got my references right yeah like we had that that have been so cool and then when they step in the water the fucking steam coming off everything god damn it that have been cool uh, that have been so cool uh, <sighs> god damn it Dear Guillermo del Toro, <laughs> hey buddy, it's your friend Brandon from the fucking. I'm, I'm gonna make like 3D models of that shit, Lady <laughs> Danger, Steampunk Lady Danger. With fuck yeah, fucking, Jesus Christ, and like yes. the suits with like the piping and shit. Oh the, my god, pilots, rad. Oh my god, yes, yes. I'm gonna fuck. do that shit. I'm a dude. You could do shit. all sorts of shit. They could have like big fucking mechanical top hats and shit. Yeah. You can do like a Phantom of the Opera one where they get like a cloak and the half mask and shit. And oh my god! Fuck that, be rad. Yeah, Eternal Alpha just looks the same. A gear, the, <laughs> yeah, right? A gear, right? Yeah, it's one gear just stuck <laughs> to him, all poorly done and shit. Yeah, dude. No, it'd be great. Because you know what? The way that they get into battle, the way that they travel uh, faster, giant penny farthing bike. <laughs> bling, bling, bling. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just fucking legs just going like crazy. Oh, my God. Oh, and the choo-choo sounds. <laughs> right. Yeah. <sighs> I'm here for it. Just a, just a lone viola playing. No, 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 no. I like, got ones fuck. around here somewhere. I'll right. you that shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Fuck, I'm here for all of that. Oh, I want that. Oh, anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where the fuck we left off. Are we are we ready to dig into the main body of this bitch? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. All right. Let me pause for the cause.
Brandon Chalmers now is Sir. a part of the show where you make us give a shit about baseball. <laughs> so, <clears throat> meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice, <laughs> um, last week we talked about a podcast that I was listening called The Rumor. So uh, to recap a little bit, because I, I would rather you go back and listen to it, but I get it. Like, fuck it. You're here. So <laughs> wait, wait, is it, is it is it the making of rumors? The uh, Fleetwood Mac album? No, no, it is. It, oh, is okay, not, okay. it is not the story of Lindsey Buckingham losing his fucking lady. It is not. <laughs> Oh, I know. It's okay. Luckily, he's a monster, so don't feel so bad. Anyway. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, no. I know. Is he right, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's told. No, no. To my understanding, he's just a dickhead. But oh, it, the oh, whole okay, thing's okay. told from, from the perspective of Mick Fleetwood. <laughs> so it's just everything is slightly obscured by two <laughs> yeah. symbols is yeah. really what it comes down to. Like, I, I don't know what's yeah. going on. My band's so, breaking anyway, up, but we're so making we, good music. <laughs> so we fired off Tell Me Lies, Tell Me Sweet Little Lies, right? <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, anyways, Jamie, the landslide is not until the last two episodes. We're not there yet, I promise you. All right, so. To da, da. <laughs> hey, look, a good sign that you might not be the greatest singer in history is that Billy Corgan did a comparable cover of one of your most popular songs. Just throwing it out there. Oh, um, ouch. Yeah, I know. It's okay. The Dixie Chicks version is fine. Um, Dixie Chick version is amazing. Yeah. Well, anyway, all right. So let's go through here real quick to recap. In 1995, Cal Ripken broke Lou Gehrig's record uh, playing in more than a consecutive 2,131 games without missing a game. This was considered one of the greatest records in baseball that it would never be broken, and Cal Ripken did it. He is commonly referred to in the baseball circle as the Iron Man. Now, smash cut to two years later where baseball is having trouble selling tickets, and Cal Ripken is one of the biggest draws that it's out there. He is the actual spokesman for Milk. We are now at like, uh, I don't know, 2,500 games or something like that. Um, anyway, so the, the whole thing stems from a game where Cal Ripken went to go leave his home in Aberdeen, Maryland to go and play a game at Oriole Park at Camden Yards against the Seattle Mariners. Now, in the time leading up to 95 and 97, Cal Ripken goes and he meets, uh, what the fuck is his name? Fucking Dances drawing a blank. Wolves. Yeah, Dances with Wolves. I'm Kevin Costner. Kevin Thank Costner. you. All right. Anyway, so at the Dances with Wolves preview, uh, Cal Ripken and his wife Kelly meet Kevin Costner. They hit it off. They have a friendship. Costner comes to a bunch of games, uh, sits in the skybox, publicly denies this while he is on a shock jock interview regarding an incident that happening that happened in the evening of 1997, where Cal Ripken goes to leave to the game to go uh, take on the Seattle Mariners. He forgets something, gloves, cell phone, something turns back around, enters his home. Here's a rustling. And then a goes rustling. into his bedroom to find Kevin Costner, dick deep in his wife. <laughs> right now. Cal Ripken decides, fuck this noise. I'm kicking Waterworld's ass. <laughs> and they have a fight. Now, as we discussed last week, Cal Ripken is a sturdy boy. Jamie is of the mindset that Cal Ripken probably beat his ass. Team that is Cal. probably a fair assessment. Team Cal. Hashtag. I am of the firm belief that no one fights harder than a naked dude with his dick hanging in the breeze. <laughs> the second you have a handle... And there is one exit from this room. That man is in a fight for his life. Team with wolves. Yeah, I, I, yeah, <laughs> I am. I am for the postman. I am here for it. <laughs> like I, I am. Team Waterworld. <laughs> Team Waterworld. I'm here for it. Team JFK. I'm here for it. Team back I am, into the left. I, I believe he is on his way to the field of dreams. He is my Bull Durham. Like he it's is there. He is, wow. he is. He is absolutely fighting for his life now 
Costner denies it, gets caught in a lie about this. We covered this last week. Yes. So <clears throat> where we left our heroes, they were waxing very nostalgic about everything that's going on. And they're having trouble kind of dealing with everything. But they they go back and forth. And they are... I, um, are you familiar with the term the Zapruder film? Yes, the Zapruder film is the film that captured the moment where JFK's head goes back into the left and supposedly right. now, captures something else. Right. Now, the, I, the irony with this is that Kevin Costner plays the lead detective and uh, investigator in the JFK assassination in the film JFK. Correct. Now, he reviews this Zapruder film over and over and over again, and that's where Back into the Left really became a household thing. Now, <clears throat> there was apparently a film of everyone at the game while they were deciding whether or not they were going to actually play. This is, to these guys, being referred to as their Zapruder film. And what it shows... Who was filming is, it? Uh, the, it the, Orioles, the Orioles broadcast. Team. Oh, okay. So they show Cal Ripken at the stadium talking with stadium officials. Now in this film, it says, you know, all rights reserved, do not broadcast, yada, yada, yada. Standard boilerplate. So Cal apparently at one point holds his hand up and he's got his hand sitting up on like the cage where like the dugout is for the Orioles and he's talking with an official. Now these guys openly admit they're like, we, we watch this way too many times and maybe we're reading into it, but what it looked like to them now, what it looked like to one of the researchers wives uh, wives was a knuckle shadow. Now they laughed and were like, is that even a fucking thing? <laughs> they believe that what it looks like is Cal has his hand up there and you can see an abrasion on his hand. Whoa. Now it is skewed by the watermark that is over top of it. So it is difficult to tell whether or not it is an abrasion, but Cal turns around, sees the broadcast team filming him, immediately puts his hand down and puts his hand in his pocket. And the, the film is ironically framed where the Owen do and the Owen not are on fucking Cal's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> eh? <laughs> right, right. Basically like this. You could not be do not filming more than you do not film right now. <laughs> now, the, the interesting thing is that we now have the technology to take low quality film using AI and, and blow it up. It's not always accurate, but it's, they, it's a thing we could do. They don't have the budget, but arguably what their conversation leads to from there is that... <laughs> Cal has an alibi by saying that I was at the stadium. Yes. I didn't miss the game. That is not arguable. Right. So what they tried to do at a certain point, they got a hold of a guy who gets them a hold of a guy and they start questioning this guy about one of the incidents at a different tape and what have you. And a police officer who was apparently in charge of a bunch of stuff, who roughed a bunch of people up and they end up hitting this dead end because the guy they talked to is Cal Ripken's attorney. Like this guy tells him we're talking about everything. And he's like, what's this about anyway? Oh no. And they explain everything. And he's like, Hey guys, full disclosure. I represent Mr. Ripken. So our conversation has to stop. And I get, I would appreciate it if you let me review the audio here and let me decide whether or not anything is privileged or anything else like that, just so that I don't end up having any grounds for legal action they they agree to do this. He lets everything go. He's like, I didn't say anything inappropriate. You know, you guys ask fair questions. That's perfectly fine. None of this has anything to do with Cal. But at this point now, my communication with you needs to stop. Oh, wow. <laughs> and they ask, would you be willing to pass an interview request over to Mr. Ripken if we decide to do so. And he's like, I can't promise anything would happen to it, but I am happy to relay the message if that is something you would like. Like he's being absolutely professional, yeah. but being forthright about everything. Yeah. Exactly what you hope someone in that position would do. So after hitting that dead end and after watching this a Pruder film so many times, 
basically what they decide is like talking to Cal, all that really does is anger the guy and get us nowhere. Of course, he's going to deny it. Why would he suddenly change his story because two guys with a podcast happen to ask him like (laughs) get out of here which is a fair argument i agree like i wouldn't fucking tell these assholes either so that's a fair argument to be had now what they decide is they're like okay so we can't prove that cal wasn't there because he definitely was so what's the real story here and they're like well the real story is the cover-up and they're like okay well how do we prove the cover-up And they said, well, let's go after the outage, the power outage. So they start a different direction Mm -hmm. and they start contacting the Maryland Stadium Authority and start asking questions and start getting a hold of the guys who were there for at the game and who's in charge of everything. And basically ask them like, hey, what's the report from this? How did this happen? And they talk to a guy who they end up uh, one guy's in New York. One guy I think is in like Northern Virginia or DC. They end up getting an Airbnb in Baltimore, right outside the stadium in South Baltimore. They walk to the stadium and they meet up with this fucking guy who they talked to (laughs) who supposedly did the repairs of everything. And they walk him through the stadium and, or he walks him through the stadium and he gets to see how the lights are set up now and yada, yada, yada. And then he takes them upstairs to the club level. And in the club level, there is the press box and inside the press box. And if you've never seen a baseball game, which feels a little far fetched at this point, like I feel like everybody's kind of seen a baseball game, but usually there's, there's home plate. And then directly behind it are some really fucking fancy, expensive seats. Oh yeah. And then usually in the second level above that, the second level is usually club level. In most stadiums, they are traditionally nicer she- nicer seats. They have an air conditioned interior area. The food's usually nicer. And it's like, free. A lot of them. A lot of them will have no. Um, you don't a lot of them. The, the boxes. No, the boxes will sometimes oh. have free food, but somebody is paying for that. Please understand. Um, but uh, a lot of times, also they'll have uh, serve like wait staff yeah. come down to your actual seat and be able to take orders for not just beers and everything else like that, but like crab cake sandwiches and popcorn oh, and ice cream and shit like that. So like crab cakes, yeah, oh. right. So like one of the last times I went to a club level game, I literally sat down, decided to get bougie about it, and had them bring me like a crab cake, a pretzel and two beers and just swipe the card. And <laughs> a lovely person came back uh, with all this food and they were like, would you like to give a tip? And I left a nice tip and then they move on. Yeah. And they stand up at the top and basically you look back, you give them a wave, they come down and they'll feed you all fucking day until your money stops being green. I would like it's a, a bushel, beautiful, sir. A beautiful bushel. experience. Give me a bushel. Right. Now, right the fuck now <laughs> in that same level is usually the press box. The press box is where the broadcast team is usually sitting. It's usually where the newspapers or the major blogs or what have you are usually sitting. And that is where they have a vantage point of the entire game. And what they are doing is making notes on the game, crafting the story of the game that they would like to write, looking at relevant facts, doing, you know, box score stuff, all sorts of things like that. So it is usually a room full of professionals who, who are acting professionally and they are, you know, trying to respect each other being at work. Right. You know what I mean, we're all here to watch a game, but at the same time, we are all definitely fucking at work. Yeah. Um, inside that press box is the old power box and power closet for the old stadium lighting system. What he showed them initially was how the new LED system runs. How it used to work is that there was a power box that had a set of keys that were only controlled by like five people. And in those boxes, you had the ability to turn the switches off. They would turn a lot of things off like the lights yeah, and they're clearly marked. Now they don't work anymore. So the guy's like, sure. He's like, can I flip the switches? He's like, yeah, fucking go bananas. And apparently <laughs> like that guy's spent like five minutes. Yeah. Just flipping things off and on and just like, like he'd flip a thing and he'd look back and then he'd flip another thing and he'd look back and he'd flip another thing and he'd look back. It's like, fuck it. When do you get to really like, when do you get to do that at a fucking baseball stadium, especially the one you grew up in? Yeah, that's awesome. like that's that's rad. So anyway, so 
They have a conversation with that guy. That guy is very forthright, but doesn't have a whole lot of information other than how does this work? Then they finally get a hold of some of the other people who they happen to get a hold of is a engineer who developed and created the system and everything. And where the second episode leaves, or sorry, where the fourth episode leaves off is they're talking to this guy and he's explaining how this happens, how the power can go out on all these bulbs and yada, yada, yada. And they start to get a little confused because he's not giving specifics on what date this was. And they're like, wait, 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 what date is the incident that you're talking about? What, what date was that? And he's like, guys, I don't, I don't have dates or anything else like that. Like, I remember <laughs> it was really warm. And then they start to push and they're like, well, no, I mean, you, you don't have any records of anything. Thing and he's like, I mean, I I remember stuff from time to time, what have you. Like, I, I remember the game that you're talking about, but I don't know, I don't remember if specifically this is the thing. And they and you know they start to push a little more, and he's like, guys, I got to be honest with you. He's like, I I can't really answer too many more questions here without making a phone call. Oh, 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 oh my god! And they're like, and then they start to ask him questions, and he starts answering. The way that if you've been prompted by an attorney, you answer. So like, and, and I've, I've seen this in movies and stuff like that, but Jamie, the, the, it would be a similar question of like, do you know what time it is? Yes, it's 9.05. Right. All I asked you was, do you know what time it was? Uh, Not what is the time? Yes. That's how they get you. So don't give more than what you have to. So they ask him, do you remember or uh, what do you remember that game in question? He says, yes. He said, do you remember what uh, do you remember what team was playing when that game was played? And he said, yes. And he said, can you tell us that team? And he said, we're done talking. Oh. <laughs> So suddenly now there's somebody who is protecting something. Yeah. Now there's one of two thought processes I have going on right now with this, right? This guy genuinely knows something and he's trying to protect the the Orioles organization. And he's been told specifically by an attorney that like, Hey, if anybody fucking pokes about this, you can basically talk to talk about it up to about here. Yeah. Try and keep yourself out of trouble. Or this guy's a fucking troll who likes to mess with people and thinks that these two douchebags with their podcasts and everything else like that deserve a little bit of QAnon fun. (laughs) So they ask him to have a, and they're like, are you willing to reach out to the person you need to make the phone call to and give us a call back? And he's like, yeah, I'll reach out. That's fine. Oh, interesting. Right. Doesn't agree to call them back. Doesn't agree to tell them anything else. Just says, yeah, I'll reach out. I'll reach out. So they decide to start pushing it from the other direction. So the next episode, episode five, they're going to call the fucking team at the Mariners and they're going to get their side of the story. Because apparently the Mariners, like, because the big, the big crux is, is that apparently these lights used to go out all the time. And at one point, in this game that we're talking about, 18 bulbs went out. 18. Apparently, in a previous game, 36 bulbs had gone out, and they still played. Mm. So why didn't they play? So that's going to be the argument. And supposedly, the Mariners, some people say the Mariners wanted to play, and they were pissed. Some people are saying that the Mariners didn't want to play at all. And it begs the question, why? Why not? Yeah. Why wouldn't they want to play? Right. Because the real question is, is this have, does this have nothing to do with Cal? Was this something out and they had a picture issue or whatever it is? And they're like, fuck it. Let's not look this gift horse in the mouth. Let's cancel this bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Were they so, coming off like a bad streak or some shit? I, I, I don't know. So that's going to be episode five and then episode six will be the last one. So the plot thickens, but they, I do really appreciate that they stopped looking at it from this like salacious angle of like, we got to crack this thing wide open. We're like, no, 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 no. We need to find out whether or not somebody fucking lied about why the game was postponed. Right, 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 right. We don't necessarily care about Cal 
whipping the shit out of dances right with right because like if that <laughs> that would come on the back end of everything else because if yeah. somebody admits yes we canceled the game for a reason other than we said then what is the reason then it begs a real question of like what the fuck's going on like you can reverse engineer oh yeah oh yeah you can follow the steps back and yeah right right I like right, it. right 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 so like it. right I like so it. So that is that is where we have left off. Uh, if you would like to listen to this yourself and not catch my in my paraphrase version, which probably missed a few things, uh, <laughs> you can catch the rumor anywhere you listen to fine podcasts. Uh, same disclaimer I gave last week. These guys wax nostalgic about baseball a bit more than most people do, but. On the other hand, I do appreciate somebody genuinely loving the source material and giving a shit about it because it tells me that they care. See, and I'm I'm going to go back and listen to all of this shit when you're done. Because <laughs> I want the juicy deets. Yeah, it's it's not as exciting. This one was was pretty good because it, it very much became of like... They they went to the game. They they decided to go to a game, and they were like, they they see this like awkward kid with like a ponytail who's at the game, and he's giving the fucking Blue Jays a hard time out in the outfield and everything. And the one guy looks at the other guy, and he's like, "Ah, oh, that was me." <laughs> and, then, and like, I they they kind of lean into this like. We're not, they constantly feel like they're asking themselves a the question, why the fuck are we doing this? And there's a fair argument to be had there. And there's part of me that, that has a very simple answer of like, you guys want to be the next serial. That's why you want to do it. Just fucking say it. <laughs> Just fucking say it. Yeah. We want to crack this bitch wide open and make those podcast dollars. And that's fine. Dollar, dollar. But, Right, right. Because if these guys can prove that they actually give a shit and they present a fine product, there are infinite number of stories they could fucking listen, look into. Like, yeah, absolutely. They could tear this part, this stuff apart. Oh, the other thing. So apparently this became the rumor became such commonplace in 97 that do you remember? Uh, were you an HBO watcher forever ago? And, and no, always we, never, or no? we we only recently got HBO. So. so there was a TV show in the 90s called Arliss. And Arliss was a comedy starring Robert Wool, uh, who most of us would know from the 89 Batman movie, did the line King of the Wicker People. Um, <laughs> yeah, he was the reporter that helped uh vicky vale or whatever it is try yeah. and like get to the heart of everything yeah, 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 um yeah. so apparently they ended up it became it was such a common knowledge thing that in the show they did a version of it where a boxer his wife gets caught having an affair with a guy who is a sammy davis jr impersonator in vegas and this guy is so distraught that they kill the lights in the arena so that he doesn't have to fight. Oh, man. <laughs> and apparently the guy who wrote this episode, it was such common knowledge to the team in L.A. that when he pitched the story, the majority of the writers were like, oh, the, the rumor thing, the, the thing with Cal Ripken. And then somebody would look at somebody else and go, wait, 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 the, the thing with, with uh, Kasser? And they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. So everyone in the writing team who he had to pitch to knew exactly what the fuck it was. In 1997, oh, man. this same year it happened. <laughs> so that's how relevant this was, that TV writers understood it on two sides of the country. Both sides, yeah. And then also we're able to create a thinly veiled version of it because the story is so good that you can do a switch a few things out and it still becomes a really credible episode. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And especially so, with boxing, a, a, a well-known charlatan sport. <laughs> right, right, right. And the idea is instead of him being physically beat up, he was depressed and sad that his wife had cheated on him. So he was just too distraught to fight. <laughs> so you couldn't see the physical reasons, but they were yeah. definitely there that were keeping him from fighting. Uh, you put that and into the, the question box, of, you put that into the gloves and you just... And right. And that was essentially the crux of the thing is like they were trying to, Arliss was trying to talk the boxer and be like, channel this. And he's like, <laughs> I hate everything. <laughs> I just want to walk off a fucking pier, but we're in the desert. And he's like, God damn it. And like, yeah. So this idea of like, I'll just walk into a fountain. It'll be fine. Like just, okay, fair enough. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's uh, 
kind of one of the reminders that this was very much a thing. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. So, but yeah. So, excuse me. Goodness. I'm turning into a pumpkin, kids. <laughs> Let's wrap this motherfucker up, Jamie. All right, Brandon. Uh, lovely recap. I'm uh, I'm excited for the the, the final bit. <laughs> Hopefully, um, yeah. Wh- where can yeah. people find you? You can find me on Instagram at that guy Chalmers Jamie Noguchi. Where can they find you? Uh, Instagram Jamie Noguchi, and then wherever you find this. So YouTube. Uh, I post it on Facebook. I don't. I. I don't know. I hardly use Facebook, but I post it there. Uh, But yeah, uh, everyone stay safe and uh, catch you later. Yep.